just released, of course, and uh, there are translations in different languages of that press release at the back, so if you'd like to grab one later. But for the moment, I'll now, uh, of course, introduce my good friend, Victor. Thanks, uh, Minister Ajaka, uh, and thank him for the great work he's doing also in my uh, previous portfolio, Multicultural Affairs in New South Wales, so thank you for the great work you're doing. Um, as the Minister said, uh, we've done a whole lot of work uh, in the real estate sector over the last 212 days since I became Minister for essentially fair trading in New South Wales. So it's Minister for Innovation and Better Regulation, which incorporates fair trading. Uh, if I can just walk you through some of the big reforms, because I know it impacts on your communities. Uh, the first is that we've introduced a real estate and property division within the Department of Fair Trading. And Andrew Gavrilatos, he's the Assistant Commissioner there, who is going to be responsible for coordinating all things relating to real estate and property. Now that shows that this government has a very strong focus on the property sector, uh, and whether it's the regulation of it or whether it's protections within it, and I'll walk through uh, those issues in a moment, uh, we are very much committed to making sure that we continue to have a strong, vibrant property sector in this state, because it has an enormous impact to our economy. But as Minister Ajaka said, it also uh, realises some of the most important decisions, financial decisions that people in New South Wales will make. So let's go to some of those uh, protections, for example. Uh, we introduced a law earlier, a few months ago, uh, concerning underquoting or price baiting. That basically means when an agent goes into the marketplace and advertises a property as being uh, not exceeding a uh, million dollars or offers above a million dollars, knowing full well uh, that the property is going to go for two million dollars. Now in those situations, that's price baiting because it means that they are trying to bring people into the marketplace on the unrealistic or on the unreasonable expectation that they were going to get a property for about a million dollars. Now, why is that unfair? Because a purchaser in those situations would need to go and get a number of inspection reports, they need to go and spend time at the property, and if they go to the auction, auction and ultimately the property wasn't even within their range to begin with, well, that's, that is um, unfair to them. So we brought in some very strong laws in place in New South Wales uh, that will prevent this from happening. So the first thing we've done, for example, is we've said, you cannot no longer you can no longer advertise uh, a, a figure above offers exceeding. It has to be an estimate price based on proper market evaluations and within a or an estimated range within a ten percent range. The second thing uh, we've done is we've increased the penalty. So at the moment they're twenty two thousand dollars. We've increased the penalty so that it includes uh, forfeiture of your commission uh, or fees. Now when you're dealing with million dollar properties, that's a big forfeiture. Uh, an important thing to say is uh, that this law will be introduced and commence effective 1 January uh, 2016. Uh, another area of reform in the real estate sector is in relation to strata, and uh, we've heard a lot about that over the last few months. We recently introduced the uh, strata bills, and there were two of them, and it went through the upper house, uh, and these are big reforms. We're talking about 90 separate bits of uh, changes to the Act. It's the biggest change to the Act since its inception in 1961. Uh, there are 2 million people living in Strata right now. By 2040, that's likely to be about 50% of our population. So, and that reflects the fact that we've got an international city here in Sydney and we're going to have uh, follow international trends. So it's important that we bring strata laws from the 20th century to the 21st century and that's what these huge reforms do. Um, within the packages, obviously, uh, we've got the collective sale renewal provisions. Um, and so, a lot of my friends that are just walking through. Uh, so, collective sale renewal provisions, uh, we've got uh, provisions that enable uh, the Strata Corporation to effectively enter into an agreement with Council to uh, make sure that those space invaders that are going into their visitors' car uh, parking spaces. Uh, can get fined by the local council. So we, we're enabling uh, this owners corporation to take matters into their own hands, which is a good thing. Uh, we're bringing bylaws in relation to smokers drift, in relation to uh, pets, in relation to renovations. We're making that much simpler. So in the past, there was a lot of gray areas in relation to whether you can renovate your property. Now we're making it much simpler. We're saying if it's cosmetic, you don't need to get approval. If it's minor 
well then you only need approval from the owners corporation. Uh, if it's major, that is structural work, then you need full uh, body corporate approval, that is 75% resolution. Uh, so we're making it much simpler. And when you have simpler, clearer laws, you have less disputes. So we're also tackling the issue of proxy farming. And that's, uh, we've seen that happen time and time again. Uh, if you live in a strata where somebody just goes around and collects a whole lot of votes, and it means that other people within the strata complex are pretty much denied in many ways an opportunity to have their say because essentially they will turn up to a meeting and there's one person there having holding 10 votes they pretty much control the meeting so we're going to curb that practice significantly so essentially if there are 20 or more units you're entitled to five percent of the votes if it's 20 or if it's less than 20 units you're only entitled to your vote plus one other now that that brings a lot more democracy uh, to strata units and it's an important area that we needed to reform and I'm pleased to say that. Another key area of reform is in relation to a defects bond, a huge protection that we're now providing to purchasers uh, and to uh, and prospective owners because in the past they would not have any protection other than the, the statutory warranties. Now we're saying that developers need to put in 2% of the contract price as essentially a holding deposit to make sure that any defects that arise within the first two years are, are fixed. Now that, again, is significant reform aimed at protecting the purchaser and, and in circumstances where this didn't exist before. Uh, also, and I'll end on this note and take any questions if there are any, uh, we've just recently announced today uh, that uh, we are stepping into the marketplace uh, to provide very strong protections uh, for purchases in relation to off the plan contracts. Uh, people have heard a lot about sunset clauses over the last few months. And for those of you that don't understand it, it means there's a standard clause in a contract that if the building is not uh, completed within say three years, uh, the purchaser or the developer can rescind the contract and then move on. What we've seen, particularly in a very buoyant, robust marketplace where the property prices have gone up, is that the uh, developer has rescinded the contract only to sell it on to another purchaser for a much higher price. So it means uh, the, purchase, the first purchaser that who in good faith put a deposit on, saw the market go up, has then been uh, deprived of that opportunity to realise that market appreciation in circumstances where the developer relied on the purchaser's deposit to actually develop the, uh, the construction in the first place. So we are uh, being very bold in the marketplace. We're saying as of today, uh, if a developer wants to use a sunset clause that will have the effect of giving the developer a windfall profit at the expense of the purchaser, will then do so at your own peril. Because we will be introducing a law into Parliament within the next two weeks that, that will come back effective as of today that will require any developer who wants to exercise their right under a sunset clause to either get the consent of the purchaser or alternatively, they will need to go to the Supreme Court and demonstrate to the Supreme Court that it is just and equitable in all the circumstances. And you know, I can say from my perspective, it cannot be just, it cannot be equitable for a developer to use a sunset clause to disadvantage a purchaser in circumstances where that developer is getting a windfall profit uh, simply by the exercise of that sunset clause. Uh, and that's something that the court will look at and take into account. So we're telling developers, if you're thinking about using that sunset clause uh, from this day forward, think again and think again. And go to your lawyer and you know, listen to what I'm saying today, because we will be bringing in legislation within the next two weeks that will add significant protections to the purchasers who previously were not provided those protections. This is a bold move by the government, there's no doubt, and we have moved very quickly uh, because we do not want to see um, purchasers who entered into the marketplace with good faith um, being deprived of that opportunity to realise their market appreciation. I'd particularly like to thank uh, Minister Ajaka, uh, who was very helpful in the formulation of the uh, policy today in relation to